We call a meeting of the Water Finance Committee uh, to order, and uh, we don't have any minutes of the last meeting, do we? Uh, no, I apologize. I <laughs> blame his mother. Right, right, right. I spent the weekend traveling in New York State and Pennsylvania, and I. Okay, anyway, uh, the same thing would just kind of a exploratory to get more information to the fire department and rescue and the merge and whatnot. So, uh, but that said, uh, one of the things that uh, Tom had put together apparently today, I didn't get a chance to really go over it that much. Uh, the whole list of questions. And uh, I'm not sure. I don't think we'll get the answers tonight, but uh, I, don't, I don't need the answers tonight. I need I, all, all, you know, we need the information. We recognize the fact that I just put this together today at 3 o'clock this afternoon. I sent Dick a copy. So you may or may not have the answers, but don't guess, okay? Just tell me what you know. That's all we want to know, okay? And uh, that's, that's from my perspective anyway. Other people may have different views. So. No, but it is a, I think. Uh, the importance of, of this combining the ambulance and the fire department, I think, is very, very important to the town. And I think this is just one of the meeting. <coughs> a public hearing schedule. May seventh. May seventh. So maybe some of the questions and some of the information that come out of the discussion this evening can be brought up. And yeah, that's what we encourage. We, we want questions, so we can try to get this right the first time around. So it's a, you take copies of these back and see what you can do to work on them. And uh, the uh, Mr. Chair, uh, yes. Before the meeting, we were talking a little bit informally. I just like to ask the best scenario, the very best scenario, one that's unreachable at this time. The town of Acton, population of 2,800. What personnel and equipment would you feel would be ideal for this population, where we're located, where we're located from tertiary medical centers uh, along the turnpike, um, in terms of both fire department rescue as well as ambulance and <coughs> service? That would be something that, and, and I don't want to inflate it, just what is the very best scenario that you would say would be the safest and meet all of the national and federal standards uh, as far as personnel, capital equipment, etc., cetera, uh, to do the job the very best for our citizenry? I don't think you can come up with an answer right away, right? <laughs> no, no. Well, that's why I told my head down. But I would like to know that. I'm going to ask that question again later yep. to give you a chance based on our population, based on our location, and based on the fact that it's, we're an hour away from a tertiary uh, care uh, service of any sort, what would be the ideal setup so for our town? Do you want it as a combined service or as separate? Or do you think combined service is the way to do it? I think nationally, what, is that not the way it's going right. nowadays? Yeah. So I would expect that to be a, a combined service. Well, I say combined service would be I mean, ideal would be four people on because you have the two and two out rule. Um, yeah, that would also, and you would have. Um, but I, I really want some more to take you on. Four, one, four one. EMS, and what what should their certifications be? They they would be cross trained as fire fire one fire two and EMS. EMS and what what cert certifications for EMS would they have? I see a late paramedic. I'd say advanced. Advanced, all four of them. No, we could have a couple paramedics, a couple advanced. Okay, that's what I want you to think about because okay. I'm going to ask that at our next get together. Because I really, as I said, don't don't inflate it. Just based on your knowledge of national guidelines, based on your knowledge of uh, other towns, perhaps here in the state or here in New England elsewhere. What is the ideal setup for personnel and equipment to service our town of 2,800 people? the very best, realizing we don't have the money or the personnel to accomplish that at this point in time, but I'd like to know what you consider to be the ideal service. Okay. 
Okay. Thank you. Anyone else have any things before we get in? No. Get that smile on you. Do you? Is that a smile? It's just a smile. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing devious behind it. It's <laughs> weird. Oh okay. Uh, so one of the things that uh, has come to my attention is that uh, over in Shapley, they turned around and uh, appropriated an extra sixty-five thousand dollars to help fund the ambulance. And uh, so, they have you talked with them to see how they're planning on working their effort? At this point, uh, they work in. Five 12 hour shifts. They work from 9 in the morning till 9 at night. And during those call times, um, the call's been busy since they've activated their, their uh, per diem shifts over there. However, since that, it's only been going off for two weeks. And we've already been activated to go to cover Shapley off those hours three or four times already. You have been asked to do. In the last two weeks. In addition to what they have over there. Only because they're, they're staffing from 9 in the morning to 9 at night. So the hours off those staff, they're not getting out and we're going over there. What? 9 at night, they stop staffing. So you've got the whole night that they don't have anybody on call. And weekend. And weekend, yeah. Not on weekend either? No, and weekend. No, I'm talking about Shapley. Correct. Yeah, correct. So this is why our rationale try to staff 24 7 because that's when it needs to be done 24 7. It's not, you don't have calls only between 9 and 9, or 9 and 5, or 8 to 6. It's, you have calls around the clock, so we, that's why we're interested in having 24 hour staff. And so the medical care gets out there all the time and not relying on other towns. Do you have data in terms of the rush hours for need as far as what time of day is the heavy? Is the heavy load for this? For us? Yes. Yeah, there's, I have that online on the notice of reports. Can you give me just off the top of your head right now, because I don't want to ask you for the details. But. Right, and, and that's, and we've, I've printed it out several times, and really there's no day or time that's Every year is different. Less than Every week. month is different. Every week so is different. scattered all over the yeah, clock and right. all over the week. I could print it out this month and it'd say Sundays are busiest. I could print it out next month and say Fridays are busiest. It's just, it's all over the place. Tuesdays are peak sometimes, but sometimes Fridays are peak. Sometimes Wednesdays are peak. It's all over the place. And does it make any difference when school is in session and when school is not in session? Well, or, this is, or, when the, this, or when the summer visitors come. This is for 2010, 2011, and 2012. In 2010, Friday was our peak. 2011, Tuesdays and Wednesdays were our peak. In 2012, Tuesdays were our peak. So this, this really, and here's a rough bar graph, so it, that's the fluctuation of right there. Okay. So. No, no rhyme or reason. There's really no rhyme or reason. Point of why should I have to pick what they did? I don't know. They may have, that might be their ideal time. I don't know. And is it, I didn't see the, the, the abscess or, or, the, or any of the, the things on that, but is there a difference in terms of season of the year? We do see a pickup in the middle of summer. We, With I all mean, the, the summer population, visitors, doubles. population goes up. Okay. And unfortunately, summer is the hardest time to get crew. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So the population doubles, and then we're struggling more. You know, basically, there's you know, a couple of us moms who have to be home with our kids. Sure. And, and people go on vacations. Understand. Yeah. Uh, another, I just see another chart here between um, 901 and noon. That's a high call, high call volume for 2010. Nine o'clock in the morning. Oh, 900 to 1200. Correct. I can tell you from personal experience that um, beginning of last year from January until probably August, our busiest time was around 3 p.m. on Fridays because it seemed like every Friday I was at the bus stop waiting to get the girls off the bus and the problem come and I couldn't go. Yep. So I know that. So then when I charted it, sure enough, it had 3 p.m. on Friday. So 1,500 in the afternoon until when? 
six ish. Well, this is 2011, and this is showing peak time from uh, 11 o'clock till <coughs> 1600. So it was busy during the during the afternoon. Again, those are our peaks. I mean, yes, 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 all yes, all yes. <coughs> And this one was from uh, nine o'clock down to three o'clock, and then it peaked up again at 1800 to 2100. Really spiked up right there. So again, it's no rhyme or reason. Mm -hmm. yeah. one, one of the questions uh, I put out, uh, the original budget showed uh, about a $457,000 uh, budget for the rescue park. And then uh, when we had the workshop with the selectmen, a few Saturdays ago, we were given a, a budget where it was only it had been brought down to three hundred and thirty-one thousand, I believe. Seventy-one. Is there three seventy-one? <coughs> Twenty-four. Yeah, that was, this is the one that this lovely put in our box. I think that, that was a that was, if I understand correctly, that was a selectman's recommendation. You're right. One thirty-one four. But there is some confusion in, 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 because in certain places in the paperwork it's listed as, as both and in other places it's listed separately as a selectman's recommendation. So but that's one of the issues that I'd like to clarify tonight. Well, I understand what, what we have. Well, I, I wondered from the selectman, did, did you explain that 100 and... We were looking at the tax rate increase at their figure. We were looking at about 85 cents. Uh, per thousand. So we went from two full time 24 7 to one full time 24 7, which is um, what York, um, the town of York does. And then um, leaving the stipends in, plus the stipends that are already there, to have the second person be a stipend person. But we would have one person work a 24 hour shift and then have two days off. And so there'd be three hires. And then the rest would all be taken up by daily stipends, like um, Chapley's doing, to have a second person in 24 7, which would be a lot. Because once you go to the 24 7, you've got a full time employee, you've got insurance, and all those extra things that bring up. But if we pay stipends to have that second person, we could bring that money down and bring the tax rate down. So that's why we're recommending the lower rate, but still demanding 24 7. Have you, have you okay, shared that? Is it with the impact? Have you shared any of that any of that thinking with, with these people? As far as I know, I don't attend those meetings. So that's um, Ed's on that committee and then Bill's on the fire department committee, so I'm sure that they've been having those discussions. We'll get into this. We'll get into this. Yeah. You know, my main objective is trying to see if there are any alternatives to bringing that 457000 down. I think it'll be a high sell. We're not putting that figure forward. We're putting our figure forward. Uh, you mean in the article you're putting that figure forward? Yes. You're not putting forward the figure that was requested by the department? No. Nope. That's rather presumptuous of the selectman, I think. Uh, you understand? Okay. Then I guess. Yeah. I think that's certainly out of order. Your department is responsible to the town meeting, it's not responsible to the select. Okay. Excuse me. Yeah. It, it just seemed that the department request would be what we put in for the article, and then the, the selectmen could recommend. Well, we haven't written the article yet, yeah. so that, that's been our discussion. Yeah. So, as I say, and then on the town meeting floor, people would say, well, why is, why the, the selectman only recommends so and so, and then you have a chance to explain it to all, uh, you know, all the town, uh, town meeting members. And if they agree with you, then that's the way they would go. But uh, we got to know what the impact of doing it one way and the impact of doing it another way. So you've seen what the selectmen have suggested. They put, they put one in my box, I took a look at it, um, 
you know, I do have concerns with it. I, you, you know, they want to lower. Have you written down your, your critique of it so that we might be able to share? I, no, because I really, I talked like two minutes at that, that, you know, that morning that we had the Warren Finance Workshop, uh -huh. and that's the only time I, I have no idea, like, this is the first time I've heard that, you know, this is why they did it. All I heard, you know, that morning was, you know, Ed said that this, they're going to do this, and then you guys had to get back. And this may be the only option that the selectmen have. I, you know, this is something that I, but I just want to know whether you have had a chance to look at this and to write down your pros and cons about their suggestion. What it's going to do positively and what it's going to do negatively compared to the service that we presently render. I have done a little bit of that, but I would like a little bit more time. Okay. Because well, I, I mean, I want to do more research. I want to do it. I want to do it right. Yes. Okay, that, 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 can, I, can I, can I, wait a minute, let me finish. This is what I'd like to do is, is bring these things out and then give you a chance to look at them and then we'll either have it for the public hearing or have, we'll have another meeting and, and be able to get this information. As I say, it just seems like we just keep going on question and we have to use your expertise I mean uh, you may find that in looking at the details from the selectmen that this would go ahead and paper over some of our, our shortcomings but not yet cause any shrinkage as far as true coverage or, or, or uh, uh, bad effects as far as the population of our town is concerned in light of possible uh, injuries and illnesses uh, but it may and we're going to have to depend upon your expertise to explain to us where the positive things are with the proposal that the selectmen have given you and where there are any negatives and um, to help us. And I, 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 excuse me, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. I would just like to suggest that we recognize the fact that Jen's job is chief of the rescue. As such, she's a squad leader. She is not, has not typically been responsible and should not be responsible for the management of the organization. That part resided with the association. And I think to the extent to which we expect her to answer questions that we should be asking of the other side of that body, we put her in a, in a difficult spot. Okay? She's a squad leader. She's responsible for the operation of the personnel and the operation of the rescue. That's it. She's not responsible for the financial management She's of clinical. that operation. She's clinical. I understand okay. that. Okay. But it's very important that we not expect of her or set her up in a position to respond to questions which she is not knowledgeable in or doesn't necessarily it isn't necessarily knowledgeable, and I just think that we need to respect that. Fact. That's a really good point. Later, that's it. But why aren't those other people here to talk with us? Yeah. Right here. I am here. I'm yeah. sorry. I, I'm newcomer. Thank I apologize. Bill. Come on up. Okay. <laughs> but it doesn't, it doesn't negate the fact that she can give us a perspective as far as clinical yeah. quality, what the effects would be of what the selectmen have presented and what she thinks we ought to be doing. From a clinical point of view, I want to know about life saves, okay, and wear and tear on people so that they are not working in at good efficiency. Now or at the next meeting? Now? Now or at the next meeting? Next meeting? I don't expect that. <laughs> when, when you can supply the answer that you're comfortable with, okay? Okay. And okay. Tansy, president of the board, Hamilton Association. Basically, what happens is we're a fundraising organization. We work on our building and whatever people donate to us. We take nothing from the town now, no funds whatsoever. So basically Jen comes up and says, hey, we need this, we need that. Anything over $1,000 has to come to the board. Anything under 500 she has discretionary over something that's really needed before she comes to a board meeting. And uh, basically this is a treasurer. So monthly we figure out what we've got. We find out what our needs are, we disperse it. We run on a very fine margin. My question to you then would be, Shapley is constantly coming into this conversation. Mm -hmm. And I must admit that I'm new to Maine, and the way it's done by town yep. is a new experience for me. Because I, 
I'm from Louisiana, and the parish government. The parishes are handled. The parish government handles all ambulance services in right. all 64 parishes. But my question to you is: Has anyone looked at Chapley in terms of trying to consider amalgamating services yes. in order to get more <coughs> equipment and more people and a bigger base? We have, and, and still are ongoing with that. But you've got to understand. We're a private, not-for-profit. Right. Shapley is a municipal department. Ah. The rescue is a municipal uh. rescue department. And they also have a municipal fire department. So when you start looking to amalgamate, the first thing that happens is where does the equipment go? <coughs> Physically. You know, it's kind of hard sometimes, like it is in government, to broach town lines and say, well, you know, like, well, they're going to be on call from 9 to 9. We could go on call from 10 to 2, but what do you do? Do you answer calling your own town first and then reach out? Or it, It's very, very political. I understand that we're... If, if I may? Yes. We approached them as selectmen because we can community to community as we started this process. Mm -hmm. But the differences were um, our department's looking for ambulance and firefighting coverage. Their department was looking for ambulance coverage over uh, only. Only. We we thought it was a great match because they just bought a new ambulance, and we've got a building where people can live. Their fire station you can't live twenty four seven. We've got you know sleeping facilities and showers mm -hmm. and kitchen and all mm -hmm. that in our building, and they don't. Mm -hmm. So we thought it was a good match. Um, so they do, do they ever even come to one of our meetings, Bill? The selectmen. Yep. No. no. So they never see them. Yeah. So you guys just done that. And their town meetings in March. So they already had their own plan because of this issue that's going on with Sanford. So they hired um, a guy for fifty thousand dollars a year that oversees both fire and the ambulance, correct? Yeah. And then they went to a stipend fee for so many hours a day. So they already had their own plan. They you know, were further ahead than us. But again, our our departments were looking for both fire and ambulance coverage and they were not. Yeah. Okay. I'd like to take the opportunity to correct you on that one thing. Uh, they did not uh, hire $50,000 coordinator. They okay. got turned down and uh, they approved, the town meeting approved $5,000 to further investigate the possibility. But they did turn around and approve the $65,000 for added uh, per diem. I thought Michelle told us that they had yeah. hired that person. <laughs> Again, Mr. Chairman, you know, we're sitting here talking about solutions, hey. and we don't even understand the problem yet, okay? We need to look at the problem and define the problem. 90% of solving the problem is defining it clearly, and I don't have a clear understanding of it right on through the whole system. I don't think any of us do. We don't, so even, I think we're we don't know the deficiencies in our own town system here. We don't know what we should be having for a town this size that doubles in, in population in the summer. <coughs> okay? We, as far as being able to sit down with a governmental agency from another town, I think the time is coming, and I know the selectmen are aware of this, that we're going to have to start looking at shared services among adjoining conterminous towns because each town cannot any longer afford the type of standard of care that's being imposed on us by technology and big city government that controls most states and, and, and the feds. Uh, as far as requirements for ambulances, requirements for the people who are, are staffing the ambulances, as well as fire rescue. And I just wonder, you know, if we could get together and know where our deficiencies are, maybe even this is, after all of this is done, Go back to Chapney again and see what we could do to, to have a combined towns, uh, two town service for this. They only work from nine to nine, which to me is inadequate, and they must feel it's inadequate because you've already answered three calls from them since they started on this new uh, time schedule. So, I mean, uh, they're maybe paying a little bit better. But uh, as far as your service is concerned, if I had a myocardial infarction at 2 o'clock in the morning, I'd be very upset, okay? I'd probably drop, drop over dead uh, from my heart attack in anger because the ambulance service wasn't there, okay? And again, that's what the whole point is. I mean, 
Because you're new, I'll, I'll try to start a little bit back. Yeah. Again, as Bill said, it's a nonprofit. Back in 1978, Sanford came to the town of Acton and says, we're no longer going to provide medical services to us, Shackley, Lebanon, Newfield, Wake, you know, all those people. So all of us around the town jumped on a bandwagon and they started their own uh, ambulance association, except for Acton. They, they deemed not wanted to do that. So there's several people in town said, that's unacceptable. We're going to start an association. It was a private, nonprofit association. And it's been running since 1980, all in a row. Again, as he said, it's donations, call volumes, mostly on donations. Well, as you, as you know, uh, the donations are gone. Nobody's donating anymore. Nobody has the money. So the donations are down. The call volumes are going down because, again, with the volunteerism, we can't, people can't leave their jobs anymore like we used to. It used to be, yeah, go ahead, go we'll handle the call, but get back in, we'll get back to work. But everything is so competitive now, people can't leave their job sites anymore. Plus, now the population is getting older. It's, and yes. in more need of yep. emergency services oftentimes. So there's a conundrum then that we have to help solve. Yep. And it's going to have to be solved by looking at, at, at other towns around us. But we also need to know exactly where we're deficient. And I agree uh, uh, that we need to uh, get a good idea from you all what we lack and what we should be having for a town our size. Right. And that's what... Again, you know, when we used to have a lot of volunteers, it was much easier. Volunteers put get that in your more. Put that in your report to us. We need X number of volunteers, volunteers, and now we only have five, and we had 15 uh, three years ago. Yep. But we need to know where we're short and where we're vulnerable to criticism. And, you know, do you have any clinical... Uh, follow-ups in terms of some of these things. I mean, if I were a chaplain and I had a heart attack at 3 o'clock in the morning and it took me two hours to get to hospital, okay, and I've already wasted the window to go up and get catheterized and get, uh, get my, my clot uh, dissolved, uh, I will be very unhappy. Well, you'll find that the, actually the Acton Rescue has a very, very good reputation. I'm sure they do, but I'm just saying. But it's getting tougher and tougher. It's getting tougher and tougher. you got a 90-minute window there. It used to be the hospital would share the outcomes with us. It's harder and harder now to get the hospital to share the outcomes with us. And all that, I understand. Some of them still will, but some of them won't. So, you know, we could take someone in and we'll never find out the outcome unless the patient tells us or the family. But if you have a 90 minute window, now they're going to shorten that window uh, coming up soon uh, between the time of the heart attack and the time that they're in the cath lab getting punctured and, and, and getting that clot uh, dissolved. Uh, if it takes that long to get the ambulance to my house and to get the ambulance to go to Portland where the nearest cath lab is or tertiary services are, then that is really not in keeping with 21st century uh, criteria. And it's not that we're doing something wrong, it's that we don't have the capabilities right now of doing it from a financial point of view and a personnel point of view, which is why we have to find out where our shortages are and what we can do to combine our services with other towns so that we can have a decent service. Yeah. Well, like as Bill said, I think that's the rule we're trying to get to. Yeah. we got to make it municipal first before we can go work with another municipality. Well, yes and no. We have to know where our shortcomings are and where our, our, good, our, our good points are. But I know there's going to have to be sh some shortcoming if, if, for example, they don't have services after 2100 hours at night time. Uh, if you have a live car on Park Street, you have to go all the way at hours trip into where a cath lab is. You've, you've just closed the door, the, wi the window on the 90 minute uh, time limit, the American Heart Association and the American College of uh, Cardiology requires you to have that patient in there by that time. We'll almost never make that. They have to have a hospital closer because by the time you get the ambulance on scene, get the patient packaged back in the ambulance and get up to port, then you're over 90 minutes. Okay. We, will, we will almost never meet 90 minutes. If you never in meet 90 minutes in the year 2015, then we need to find out what we can do to improve that. They, because, because you should not be you should not be in danger because we live in the in the western part 
of York County. Right, but the only way you're going to do that is either if we get a helicopter service out Maybe here. Maybe that's going to be the answer. Or, I don't know. or a hospital out here, but we can't We're not going to get a hospital out here. We're not going to get a hospital out here. Helicopter we, may be the service that all of us can get together with, all the towns. I'm just saying, in the year 2015, if you're not getting that hospital, that hospitalized patient there at the tertiary service hospital within 90 minutes of the onset of their infarct, that is not fair to that patient. And it doesn't meet the standards. And I would worry about not only poor outcomes, but I would worry about litigation in the year 2015 if we're not providing services to that are in coordination with the American Heart Association and the American College of Cardiology. Well, in the straight yeah. matter, we have no obligation to provide any EMT service in town. We don't have an obligation, but if we're going to do it, the question is then, do we, uh, we are obliged to a certain degree if we have a system in place, but it's not doing the job that we need to have it done. One, one, one of the things here that I see is we talk about trying to define the problem. Okay? One of the problems is with the Ambulance Association being a private organization, and the way it's operated over the years, it's got to the point now where it cannot still operate. And so something has to be done. And the proposal that they come into is to turn around and have a combined fire rescue department in the town of Acton. Well, again, I and so that's the first thing. And then all of a sudden, the second thing will be, how do we man? Okay. Yes. Five years ago, we spent quite a bit of money, or six years ago, no. on a review to see what should happen. We've had a printed report that says we should be joining forces, oh, making a municipal yes. department. Okay. And I think the three of us have been fighting the battle for those five years to get this thing through. I mean, it's all documented. It's, there's multiple pages there. The other thing going behind this is most of the people that are on the fire are also on the rescue. So you're looking at the same people 90 some odd percent of the time. I understand. So we, uh, you know, you only get out when the people are there and available. And there's nothing right now that's going to affect that too much other than getting some money on the table so they get reimbursed for spending all those days away from home. Typical ambulance call, three hours commitment. Well, it also worries me that there are state and federal guidelines now that require certain certifications for, for, your, for your ambulance personnel. But there's no money behind them. And, but they have to pay for it out of their own pocket. That's right. Yeah, but that could be part of the solution. Exactly, also. exactly. That's just why because we're running too tight to our budget. Our main thing right now is to keep the ambulance in good repair and service. Keep the equipment on it, up to stuff, so that when we do go, we know we've got what we can on there. You so there's no money left over for training, uh, new equipment. We're slowly putting money away, but you know, it's not for new ambulance, it's, it's not going to happen. You mentioned at the Saturday meeting with the with the selectmen about the fact that you were losing money. Uh, I guess it was the uh, the ambulance service. Um, we're not losing money, but we're not. We don't have any extra in there to go on and do. How much bad debt? Like to how much bad debt do you have? We have none. 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 No, we would lose money if Sanford had to start covering the calls, and then they'd be paying two thousand dollars a call. If Sanford took over. Not no, if they no. took over. If what? After July first, if our ambulance didn't leave the building because of staff, they, they would charge us. us. That's when they would stop. Excuse me, I think. I, I, if I understand correctly, that's not true. If we have a an EMT response, even at the basic level, one right. person no. without an ambulance, then it's a mutual aid call. Right. Yeah. 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 I've talked to Chief Benardi directly, and he's the guy heading us up. Well, right. Because that, that was a scheme that another time I was trying. I didn't want to respond, but that's not. We'll get into that yeah. in, the, in this. I do have a uh, copy of that feasibility study. I don't know if you've ever seen it. <coughs> I've never seen it. I'll like see if I get some copies. Of yes, sir. Yeah, 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 none, of, none of us have ever seen it. None of us have ever seen it. I don't know. Does the, the Board of Selectmen have you had a chance to see that also? Yeah, that came yeah. out yeah. before yeah. this board. November. You know, I understand that. Yeah, right. Yeah, but we have seen it. Okay. It's been around. 
Okay. I'll get some copies again. Thank you, sir. The committee's been approaching selectmen for the last, what, six, seven years, mm -hmm. but the board in the ambulance wasn't always in agreement to go forward. The board that's there now has really pushed this forward. They've done everything they've done. I think you remember at our meeting, they had to go to the uh, Secretary of State to get approval to give us their assets because it's over 50000 and they've gotten that approval by paying for their own lawyers. So this board has really done the work to make it to the point that the selectmen felt it was time to put it on the floor. Before, it was just so much disagreement within the board that it was never going to go anywhere because if the, if the private nonprofit board couldn't agree on it, there was no way that it was going to go onto the floor. But now the new board really has done the work to make this happen. And we do share a sheriff with the a deputy with uh, Shapley, so we have so done a, sort of a history now that you've started. Right, right. Service. So we it, it is a possibility to after that is part of our you know if it becomes part of the town. Mm -hmm. If not, we've got somebody twenty four seven. They can answer calls in Shapley, and we get the money for those calls from the insurance company. So that they'll bring in more money into their own budget. There. Right. How about this, the state emergency planning department up in Augusta, what can they help us with? Anything? I've already gone and met with the uh, county EMA and tried to bring the problem to them because there's a number of departments like that. This is and, 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 and Alfred now. We're yes, talking. correct. Okay. I'm also the EMA director for the town. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> we're many hats. Okay. But so, Sam, basically to our brand new EMA director came in in January. What can you guys do to help us? Here's one of the problems we're having in all the towns around here. And they proposed a fast response vehicle with a paramedic on board to be located somewhere in the three towns and similar to the sheriff. The sheriff is operated by county, but both our towns pay half into keeping the sheriff here. So he's a 40-hour asset. And we're looking at something like that with the emergency paramedic, but it got into... Uh, some legalities with changing a law to say the county can provide the services instead of the sheriff as the law is written now and uh, that get into a conundrum and get loaded down so that's no longer in the air right now. So when you went back to them what did they say in a that, that was a, I was you're telling me that the county might be able to provide half the amount some no nope. nope. it was zero. it was just going to be a a proposal a proposal for where people would come under there but not how to pay for it we would right. have to pay them for it they, right. we would pay the county for it but you know we would collect anytime the paramedic went on one of our calls we transport it we would get that building so it would I help see. offset it I see. but as of right now it's uh, too small to even think about i'm I continuing see. to work with them on something similar but right now that's not gonna come up just real quick math but Probably would have cost the town to get on board with that to share with somebody. We could have another or one full time person in here that's in our home doing fire and EMS, not just EMS. And that's the thing a lot of these towns around are doing just EMS coverage. So if there's a fire call come in, they sit there and look pretty, but not handle the fire calls. And we're trying to do the best of both worlds in our community. Tell me, for towns this size across the country, is it not a combined service in most in most towns, or is it still separate? Well, like you said, a lot of it's countywide across the country. Well, okay, across the country. But do they share, as far as ambulance and, and fire rescue, as one team? I'll stick with York County, because I know York County. Yeah, stick with what you know, Peter. <laughs> What's that? Stick with what you know. Yeah. yeah. You're going to answer. In York County, like Alfred, um, it's a... Fire and EMS over there, it's, it's a municipal one. And Shapley, you, it's municipal fire and municipal rescue. So if they're not both, I mean, right now they're two separate entities. They're really two separate entities. So if it's an EMF call and people are only in EMS, that's what's going on fire. And they're not really combined. Lebanon was the same thing, the new fire chief over there, or the new public safety chief, whatever they want to call them. He's combining them over there, so they're going to be one unit, like we're trying to do here. So everything is going out together. Newfield, um, their uh, Limerick's a little unique. It's a municipal-owned equipment, but they're not municipal. Oh, every, every permutation and combination. Of yes. 
And then there's the Ross Corner Department. They are a private organization, but donated money through uh, Waterboro and Shapley. We help run that Ross Corner Department. So there's no one department the same around here. It's all uniquely different. The only way to get you uh, the same is by county-wide own operated systems. And there's none of them around here. How about Alfred? Alfred is, um, well, right now they're they're fire and rescue, but they I think they still, I think they have separate budgets, but I'm not 100 percent sure on Alfred. Water rolls all gone under one finally, but they they've grown tremendously fast. Bill, yeah. yeah. I, I got just a kind of an overview question. Um, given what you you learned from the report you guys had had done a number of years ago, and from from the uh, energies that are uh, before you now to consolidate the departments in acting, um, can you help us to understand as an interim uh, uh, event the the proposal that's before? Before this committee now, and it's probably going to go before town meeting, of, of consolidating the two departments. Um, do you see that as an interim solution, and 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 could you, or would you formulate a, uh, a scenario for the town meeting that would that would explain it as maybe a, a, a financial bump in the road? In other words, we, until we can work out a consolidation arrangement with Shapley or another municipality nearby us. Um, can you kind of give us a long view that would help us to well, the, get the long and the short of it right now would be that if if this doesn't happen with the funding we currently make, yeah. if we couldn't make six calls and San to come here, there would be no association for the other money broke. Yeah. Okay. And long range I think if we met it on this status, like we're already taking calls at Chapley, if we have the people there to do mutual aid, yeah. our neighbors will understand that, and we will make the money for those calls. You don't get paid for every call. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of people that can't afford it, insurance companies, or, you know, or if you do not transport, if they don't get in the ambulance and go somewhere, you make nothing. Yeah. Yeah. But as you get known and start doing this, I think it'll bring in more funding to offset what we're paying out. Yeah. Long range, I don't really have a crystal ball, so I couldn't say, you know, that Chapley and us will be best buddies or Chapley and Lebanon. I think the thing that would happen there is all these towns start getting a little better as the mutual aid would improve. Yeah. Um, well, it would, it would help, I think, this, this group to to kind of see a, a, a kind of a game plan from, from your perspective. You you told us when we met on Saturday that you, there was a morale problem that was uh, looming, not, not morale, but no, um, no morale um, the financial end of things were, would would start to cut into your number of uh, staff. Is that, is that, well, is it's that, not cutting into the staff because we don't pay our staff. But what he's saying is because of the towns around that are staffing, we're losing some of our personnel because they're covered all the time. Yeah. So they get paid to, yes. to go to Shapley. Like we've lost three members yeah. that I know of doing day shifts over Shapley, so that hurts us during the day. And, and you want to keep, obviously, the people that you've trained and are part of a team together. Yeah, I mean, we can't blame them. they got, they, they got to make a living. They go over the money. Right. No, I understand. I understand. But, but that should be part of the... But that's hurting us. You know, the, the proposal, okay? Well, that, you, know, you know, what we have to do that whether we increase per diem or we increase the... Well, you know, you know, and the there is no per diem right now, okay? If they go out, they get a what, $10 gas card for how many hours? Yeah. yeah. And that's it. I'm going to ask another silly question. Sure. What if you go to Augusta, to the State uh, Emergency Management Office, mm -hmm. and to the Health Department, Mm -hmm. and ask them if they have any suggestions as to what to do uh, for patients who have acute cardiovascular <coughs> injury in the middle of the night and it takes you a minimum of two hours to get to a tertiary care center. You know, that is 
so way far beyond what we're trying to do. We're just trying to get the ambulance out the door to start a On your service I'm just telling you that if yep. you get it out the door and you get to the person's house yep. and they have a they have a stimmy, mm -hmm. okay, yeah. and it takes you more time than what the yeah. national data yep. and the national requirements yep. are to get them there, then maybe we should ask the state for some suggestions and help. From the from the state emergency manager. That's where I go to my county emergency manager, and that's what he does. He knows the people up there. But the reason we need to ask the county for a follow up. Yep. What, I'm working with them right now as we speak. We're looking at different plans. Okay. Because you see what I'm trying to. Do. I know what you're it's, saying, but that's it's it's not that you have to have an ambulance and a person there. Right. But you also have to by having an ambulance and a person there provide services that are in fact required now by medical knowledge and by criteria that are set by the feds and by the state mm -hmm. in terms of getting your patient to a tertiary care center unless they're going to allow you to do uh, uh, injections of uh, anticoagulants in the ambulance making your diagnosis at the time at the bedside of the house. Paramedics do uh, yeah. We do some objections. They said they can't do it in me. We're off solving the problem that we have in the body. So, you know, I'm, I'm just saying. I, I understand where you're coming from. Okay. But I'm going to look yeah. at the immediate future. And, you know, if this doesn't work, we might all be wasting our time because there won't be any ambulance here. You're, you're talking big picture, which is yeah. the right way to go. But the federal government doesn't look at us and say, oh, you know, we've got to do something. Well, like I feel that. like you're talking like Z when they're trying to figure out how to get to Z. Yeah, they've got all this right. in between. I mean, I understand what you're saying. It's I, I get what you're saying, that there's standards. If we're going to provide the care, there's standards that probably have to be met federally and statewide. I don't know. But I'm assuming, most likely with most things, but you guys are just trying, I mean, that's like so far in your... Right. Because that's, you're really just trying to... they may not even have an ambulance. Exactly. So... Yeah. Well, yeah. You know, what do you do? Get a general right. bell ambulance or move the hospital close, right? right? Once we get them in, they go. For me, for me, I mean, I work at Mercy per diem yeah. on the side. And for me to go to there, which is right near Main Med, it's over an hour to drive there. Yeah. So you think about going to a call and getting that person ready so they can actually be moved there. There's no way you could do that in an hour and a half. Yeah. There's no way. The only way you can do it, it is by life like this. Yeah. If you have to. And which, which does respond to that, by the way. To be honest yeah. with yeah. you, I have not heard of any federal or state mandates for EMS to get them to a hospital like that. The only thing that we're they're pushing in the state is less than 20 minute on scene time. They're, 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 that's standard of care, standard yes. standard of care, but that's not that's not required. If, and I think what Will is saying, you know, is if you got into a lawsuit over something, well, here's the standard of care, respond to it. And all you have to say is, look, you're an hour and a half from, from Portland, which is what you are realistically. Right. And the law court's going to say, well, they did the best they can, right? And exactly. that's what your that's obligation right. is, to do the best that you can. And we all who have done emergency services, and I've done my share of them, know that that's what's real. I'm just right. more afraid that if this doesn't work, that we'd have no services. That's a very scary thought for a yeah. town. Yeah. Yes. It's extremely okay. scary. One thing is, your proposed budget is for two full-time people at the station 24-7, is that correct? And they would both be cross-trained. Uh, okay. Slept and made it three times. Our proposed, she's saying our proposed. Yeah. Not slept. Your proposed, correct, is two. Two right. 24-7. Okay. But that requires uh, how many full-time right. equivalents? And that, that requires three full-time equivalents to have two there all the time? And do you guys do, yeah. do you guys totally how get what the segment is slashing from your budget? Do you understand? Oh, okay. they're slacking. Um, but they're my understanding, you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, my understanding is that between uh, there's gonna be twelve hours every weekday and then all weekend that we're only have one person on. And if we don't get someone else to come out, if a call comes, you can't transport with one person. Okay, one person all weekend. 
and then during the week it would be twelve hours a day. Can, can day. I can I suggest? I think that is, is that this is a like a proposal. Twelve hours a day. Uh, Jen, I, I, I think this is a select one proposal, yes. and I think you're putting yourself in the wrong spot by trying to answer that. You should be looking to the selectmen should be telling us what their proposal yeah. is. You should not, I, I, excuse me for suggesting that you yeah. don't, but I think you're, you're, you're off in territory where, you, where it's dangerous, okay, I, and it could be misunderstood. And yeah, and, and I understand you're trying to protect her from not answering what she is not qualified to answer, but there should be some hard copy on what the differences are. I mean, do we have a hard copy thing that piece of paper that shows yes. what the selectmen are actually? Excuse me, I don't think we have anything. That's mm -hmm. what I'm looking for here. I mean, Ted hard just kind of threw it out in the air, and I didn't write it down the first time. But, geez, I'd like to see a hard copy of what he actually thinks that right. well, or anything that like you guys can take from your budget. Clarification <laughs> on what you're you're asking for here: you would have two people, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It's very simplified. That my understanding is just to clarify that. Be cross trained, correct? Don't you have to have an additional person, a full time equivalent, just to allow for? So how many personnel are we talking about? Is it two full time? Two full time. That means three people. Two full time. Ours, I can answer that. Two full time, and the rest will be staffed with per diems, which is part time. Per diems would would be to cover. Uh, Vacation and breaks yeah. and all that. And, um, and shifts that are not covered by the full timers. And only, not covered. With only two people, they can only work. I was going to say. I think with the fire department, they're allowed up to 53 hours a week okay. without overtime. Okay. So two people aren't going to do 24 7. No. Just, right. just so we understand. No, but the that. coverage would be 24 7. The that's coverage the is 24 7, but the two people can't do it. The two right, people. That's what I'm. Yeah. Yes. And so how many full-time equivalents would that require, including your, your stipend people or your part-time people and the two full-time people? How many full-time equivalents per week are you talking about? Yes, I'm not understanding the question. Okay. In order to have a person cover something, one person seven days a week, they can't do that. So it requires some other person or persons to allow for one person to work Right. Seven, but we're only going to, I guess, we're only going to have two, quote unquote, full time people. That is with benefits, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That's what ours is. The rest of it is is part time people. And how many part time people will you need in order to keep this formula of two full times, twenty four seven during the weekdays, and one full time on the weekends? You must require how many extras there? How many, many more people, or how many more shifts? How many more people? That would depend on who wants to work what shifts. I can't really give you that. Well, again, with the per diem shifts, they can't work any more than Jesus. so many hours. Yeah. Eight Otherwise, hours. they'll get benefits. How many? Eight. Or I think yeah. I think we said eight or ten. He was originally figuring that one. It's a little different with fire. I was going to say it changed. Yeah. I was told that it was different with fire and that's Can you find these people too? Well, I mean, that's the key yeah. because now more and more towns are going out. That's our fear. Uh, fill the shifts. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Can I can I interject here just so we understand? We're all talking about a plan that we don't know about, except as Jen has described it. But I think we should all understand. If I understand what Jen has told me correctly, is that she was asked to budget around this plan. Right. So this is not a plan that originates with her. The plan originates. We don't know where, and we don't know exactly what the plan is. But she has put together a budget to respond to that plan. Right. Okay. Right. That we haven't, we have not addressed the question yet of what is going to be the best plan for the town of Acton. And in order to do that, we need to find out for ourselves what the problem is here. And we we're talking about solving the problem. Again, and, and, if the and, and if they're saying two full times for five days a week and one full time on weekends, that's going to require more than three people. That was the slightest proposal. Okay. No, because that's how the proposal is two hours a week. You've got to come. Exactly. So we don't really know what these plans are. What I'm suggesting is there are probably a number of options that are available to the town <coughs> that will beat both proposals, okay? But they haven't even been looked at yet. Right. Okay. Because two plans have been laid out before us. We looked at the budgets for those. We haven't seen the plans. Right, but I think just for budgetary reasons, 
the, the figuring was to fill two people 24 7, seven days a week. That's where you came up with the number mark, right. whether they were a 24 hour shift, a five hour shift, or right. one hour shift, it doesn't matter. It's the same amount of hours with two people 24 7. Let me just throw out a plan out of the air, okay, that is going through my head. We have, I don't know yet how many qualified rescue people we have. What happens if we paid those two people to stay in town, or two people every day, just to stay in town, not to be sitting over at the fire station to respond to that limited number of calls, but who are available on call, okay? That would be, I think, probably a lot less expensive and a lot more productive than paying somebody to sit there to respond to 200 calls a year or one every day and a half. That's just an idea that's thrown out and I'm saying there are all kinds of other ideas out there and this is why we need to go back, okay, and ask ourselves the question, what is the problem we're trying to solve here? Yep. I think we just, have some idea. I'm going to throw out in opposition to that a little bit is because okay. we go in trends. All of a sudden we get some dedicated EMTs, they're there every single call. Yeah. All of a sudden something comes up, they're gone. Now we're right back down again. So mm -hmm. we're trying to do the best, as he stated at the beginning, what do you think is the best you could do is 24-7, because at least to a minimal of two, for the most part, the ambulance could transport with two people. Sometimes you need additional help to get people out of the house, whatever, but two people, that ambulance can roll and patients can be transported to the hospital. I understand, person, I understand that the I ambulance need. can roll and we can get patient care, which is day and night over now if nobody's going, yeah. but we're still waiting for somebody to show up to drive the ambulance. Another point on that is they will not be you know, sitting just there. something that put out the air, no, no. not a plan. And no, some of the communities go that way because they, they have the people. They won't be sitting there. Okay. We have plans for them to stuff like checking the air packs, all the stuff that the state I requires is out there. We have to do on our Monday night meetings. I understand. So they would have a schedule when they're not out. They would definitely be working. They're not going to be sleeping. But we don't have a schedule. Months. We don't have a manager. We don't have a supervisor here. All but it's all in there. Yeah. What are those full time people? Again, I want to make sure that when you come back, we have the further discussions after we've all had a chance to see this stuff. Yeah. Having two people on five days a week and one person on for the weekends is more than three people. Okay. Full -time, yeah. But full-time equivalents. How many people have to be hired or have to come in and get stipends or whatever in order to meet this type of a schedule? Certainly there's vacation time and there's work time, uh, 288 hours to be expended on this time <laughs> in here per week. Three people can't do that, can they? I cannot even answer it, um, what you're wanting only because I need to know what the law is on how many hours a right. person can work. Exactly. Once I get that, okay. then I can give you a ballpark figure on how Fine. many per day of people we would need. Okay. But it's going to be a couple more. Right, but again, it's all depends on the hours you get. Per day of shifts could be a two hour shift, five, ten. Correct, but you're going to need another person, yeah. is what I'm trying to say. Those three people oh, can't okay. work the whole right. week right. of 288 work hours. Right, that's where the part-time call people come in. Right. And how many part-time people will be needed? Is that going to be... I can't give you that until I know the law. Right. Is that, that, that needs to be put in, into this formula that you're talking about having two for five days and one for the weekend. It's not going to be just three people. No, no. What we said was going to be three people. That's where the premium people are. The 30 people is the recommendation of the select. Three full time and fill everybody's staff and half of that would pretty in. Was their recommendation, yes. And they thought they could cut that much out of the budget doing that? The, the cutting out of the budget was only staffing two people five days a week for 12 hours. So that's not covering two people on the weekends and the rest of the 12 hours five days a week. Right. That's so where they cut the budget. Totally back, according to that plan. We're totally back to the volunteer operation right. from from nine in the morning till nine at night, or, or nine at night till nine in the morning, or whatever, whatever the hours are. But but you know, again, 
we're talking about solutions before we have a clear understanding of what the problem is. And, and well, why do you keep bringing that well, up? We know what the problem is. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't think we do. I mean, we don't have the manpower to, to, to turn around and... We don't, and we don't have the funding to keep this going. It's not one of the problems. Because there's no volunteers. That's a big problem. We're operating well, well, we'll just said because so, we so if our problem is volunteers, exactly. how can we arrange okay. to support our volunteers? How can we expect people to stay in town and not get paid when they can go out of town and actually have a job with benefits and get paid? I mean, you, you, people have to live, you know? Maybe. We're seeing that now. I mean, well, like I say, just simple. Work. Simple. 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 Yeah. Chat, yeah. 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 Respondents that don't work during the day and they're covering over there. And Lebanon is going to start, well, that means they're going to the same process we are in now. And they'll know again for the 1st of July on where they're going to stay in. But they're also shooting for pretty huge shifts over there. I understand. You understand, you understand what we're trying to ask of you all to provide as far as the clinical evaluation of their plan. What is the ideal plan for what we have? I'd like to ask the chairman if we couldn't get another time to hear their report. In the next week or so, would that be possible? Get what? Well, next Monday. <laughs> well, the next time. Next, uh, next meeting. Oh, the report that they. That they are going to get. Yeah, we can get that made. We can have it made up at the town hall if we borrow the copy. I, I may have it. Uh, I think I should have it. Uh, no, he's yeah. talking about a report back from us. What oh. they were expected from us for information. Oh, yeah. Yes, we've given up tonight. <laughs> And a copy of that it, yes. uh, other thing five years ago, that uh, overall yep. assessment. Okay. But the, the, the one that Tom has come up with, the list of questions, are there any other questions that we want to ask? I wasn't expecting a written response to this. I was hoping that we would have a discussion here and have a, have a you know, take reports so that the public could understand what's going on here. I mean, I know we're short of volunteers, so the question is, if that's the problem, then why do we not address the issue with our volunteers? Like, I mean, and, and just, is there a way that we can support our volunteers, you know, without taking a hammer with it? Yeah, but... I also heard but, you but say but that Tom, there's what, not... what they've done, okay, recognizing the lack of volunteers, yep. okay, yep. That their solution is to what they're proposing. Well, I think that's I just, that's I just want to throw out something. Solution. No, 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 no. I just want to throw something real quick. We have a lot of volunteers, right. but they don't have a lot of hours to right. volunteer. Right, right. So that's a difference. Yes, yeah, I understand. Okay. Right. Right. And another thing was funding, I heard you say, that you Absolutely. used to get a lot more donations, and people just don't have money to donate anymore. Well, they so, a, so it's another. Yeah, but we're not going to solve the problem of the ambulance association. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we've got to turn around and look at turn around, and the requirement is going to have to be if we want any ambulance services in the town of Acton, it's going to have to be with to combine the services. Of the town. Well, that's not clear to me yet, but that's probably where we're going to end up, yep. and I recognize that. I'm not, I'm not sure that that. that we're, we have we're ready no, to do that. We, we have no power over the ambulance association. Well, I understand yeah. that. Okay. That's fine. We run for thirty years that way. Right. Thirty-five years. But to come on to the FD side, we're telling you it's not going to make it go any better. It's going to be run the same if it comes to the FD. I understand. I looking for fun. I understand. Okay. She's a question. Yeah. Yes, Jeff. Tom, um, to answer your question a little bit about um, what the problem is, mm -hmm. and you know, everybody's, you know, they've all told you that it's a lack of volunteers. Um, let me elaborate a little bit on the whys of the lack of volunteers. Right. Because I think that's only, critical to understanding this issue. Yep. Not only. Um, is life a lot different than it was 10 years ago. There's more dual income households um, that people need to work more hours um, to make less of their bills, basically, I mean, because mm -hmm. things are skyrocketing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know how to say this Just say in a way that doesn't make someone else look bad, <laughs> but I will say that I did, when I went through and looked at the whole picture, there was a real lack of recruitment retention in the past years that I've worked really hard on 
the past year and three months to try to build back up. Um, Pete and I were talking about it. We have this big gap from about, what, 23 years old? And then we have us older people at 40 years old. <laughs> There's this big I, gap. The other term wiser, Jen, not older. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, we have, we have, there's this gap here. And, and that gap right there, in the past, would typically do the most of the calls. Yes. Because the younger kids are in college, as older kids have, uh, uh, older kids, as older people have families, yeah. those, you know, that section right there, we don't have that section anymore. That's right. Because of the lack of recruitment for that short period of well, Whether it was a lack of recruitment, whether it was a lack of people wanting to volunteer, which is another big thing. A lot of people don't want to volunteer anymore. Right. You know, it, I, I don't know what the difference is. Well, some of the reason why they're not volunteering because they're having children and they're actually spending time with their children. Right, and plus, that's a good plus thing. it's harder to eat out a living. Yeah. Yes. And they want to rest a little bit too. Because like when my dad was volunteering, we never saw him. He was always gone, gone, gone. Right, right. The way of living like that. What do you mean? You were with us. Like, <laughs> oh, you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> you were with us, baby. <laughs> so, you know, so with Petey and I, yeah. you know, I've got my daughter along a lot, too. You know, with Petey and I working so hard last year, there was improvement. It just wasn't as good as what we need. Mm -hmm. we, we can't, you know, the people can't, the people need patient care. I think we understand that. And right. that's my yeah. ultimate goal is the patient care. We've got to get that patient care. Yes. And I, I think we understand that, uh, but I think the, you know, again, we're reaching for solutions when this body, at least, who has, at the request of the town meeting, been requested to research and give our advice. Well, I've been asking for <laughs> five months on help. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean, we're trying money. to do our job, and we, we have all we have had so far on paper. Okay, or a bunch of numbers that have changed, as you well know. Okay, we have had no proposals from anybody, so we have no idea what we're talking about. We have a lot of contradiction in the information we've had. Okay, we're trying to do our job. Okay, and again, you know, I keep coming back to we need to, if we're going to do what our job is for the town meeting, we need to understand it and <coughs> be able to. Support it, and I, 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 my own feeling is, I think we have two proposals out there, and I think there's a broad band of stuff in between. Well, this okay. is the, like, the EMS proposal right here, proposed EMS. Well, budget. that's 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 uh, that is one budget. There are all kinds of numbers in there you could find, all right. And mm -hmm. I, I really think we need to understand what we're doing. We don't, you know, who hires and fires. We hire people. I have no idea, and I certainly don't want to create this body and not have that defined. Who are they responsible to? They're responsible to you. They're responsible to you. Um, the who supervises them? Uh, Chief this, uh, the 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 well. That's that's an assumption, but there is nowhere on paper where it says that happens. That, that's the way it has been, but there's nowhere on paper where it's there. Okay. One of the things. That has been brought out is the, defining the problem again. Lack of volunteers, right? What can we do to improve that? What is, we can turn around and I'm just throwing this out, increase stipends or figure a way to hey. make us competitive right. with the other towns and whatnot right. so that these people will turn around and think twice and say, see, you know, I can make a little extra money because the Acton Fire Rescue will turn around and, and, and pay something decent, okay? The second thing is that one of the problems you identify is uh, qualified people. And one of the problems we've recognized is that the Ambulance Association has not been able to have the necessary funding to pay for the training. So, my idea is turn around, increase stipends or whatever is necessary to make the the reason for volunteering better and also turn around and provide more the training and say we will provide the, the training. And recertification. So and and recertification training. Yeah, that should never come out of their pocket. Right. No. It's ridiculous. Uh, as say, these are incentives to turn around and, and get these people to turn around. 
So as I say, but with that in mind, I, I think that, you know, have you think about some of these things and what it would take, what your recommendation possibly would be to turn around and, and put into the uh, your recommendations when you come back. I think the increase of stipends is a good idea too, because once you have trained people and have them, you want to keep them, as you guys have mentioned, it's important. And we're not even paying our rescue people. Yeah. Anything. So how we're paying our firefighters, we're not paying our rescue people. If we have people in common responding to the same scene and some of the questions that are here, uh, how do they? How are they supposed to be? Hit? How would they be? Hit? Can I go through some of these before we no. call it an evening, please? Because I, I think I need this information. I don't know if you folks do, but uh, yeah. okay. Uh, uh, you spent your time writing this up. Yes. Well, I'm not going to tell you an answer to that. No, no, I don't want you to. No. And if you if you don't, then I. If, if we need to discuss it further, take some time and go. I don't want you guessing. Like a total numbers, it fluctuates from 40 to 30. So I, I don't know what it is today. So you know, 30 to on. You're saying 30 to 40? But I can give you an exact answer. Okay. Just not All right. right All right. Let's go through a few of these so we're, so we're clear as to what we're looking for. Yeah. Total number of trained firefighters, one and two. I can get you that answer, yeah. Okay. You don't have it right off hand. Okay, total number of trained drivers, assuming they are different necessarily, that some of them are, right? Yep. Some of them aren't. Yep. Okay? Okay? Number of members who are also rescue members. Okay? Uh, approximate annual call numbers, around 200. What do you, what do you, what do you say? 200? Or, or 200 you, minus, yeah. What's that? 200 minus. Okay, all right. Well, you, you have all that number. Yeah. Well, yeah. My is there like yeah. 75. Yeah, okay. All right. All right. And uh, approximate annual percentage of response to calls. You 100 percent? Are you 90 percent? Or in other words, are you 100 percent? Are you are you calling for every call? Or your call? Yes, you are. Yep. So you're 100 percent there, yep. right? Okay. Not right. always adequately staffed, but yes, we've always had numbers that. Okay. Call. You mean you mean for interior attack or something like or that? Whatever, yeah. Okay. Okay. All uh, right. Just for an example, today we had a wood fire, mm -hmm. but I didn't have somebody qualified to drive the truck. Mm -hmm. But I had responders go to the scene. Yep. And okay. we had that mutual aid down with the truck. So, the truck. Okay. Yes, we have a member that goes to every call, okay. but not adequately staffed. Okay, all right, all right. Um, and you have, I know that you have a, oh, um, source of uh, training funds. You, you municipally funded for training, right? Correct. The town, town pays for training. Okay. okay. So, uh, members' compensation method. I, I know you have a compensation method. Yep. We the fire department, we have the stipend, which is 16000 Two hundred twenty-three dollars okay. last year's, or this current year right now. Approximately sixteen thousand. Yeah, and the way that is divided is, it's a point system. So every call, every training, anything to do with the FD, we take through the points and we divide it by the amount of numbers. So the more calls we have, the more trainings we do, the less money they make. That's but but the overall, how has it been working? We made less than five dollars an hour last year. No, that's not hard. No, but I mean, it's working. Okay, no, but is it is. is that something? Is it any kind of incentive? You know? Yeah, exactly. Again, it's not a lot. We're still like, even though we have excitement, we don't consider ourselves a volunteer fight. Basically, right. volunteer a lot of staff. You have insurance for them in case you're injured on the job. Yes, we do, yeah. And that's yeah. adequate. Workman's insurance, they have workman's insurance. Uh, like, well, no, we have additional insurance, okay. too. Not that, yeah, like, it's like an after. Okay. For additional, yeah. But is, you're, you're funded right now, your, your compensation is less than $5 an hour, is what it boils up to, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, that, that's an interesting number. Okay, let's let's talk about rescue for a moment. Your total number of calls, Jen, is around, or total number of members. Uh, approximately 35. Huh? Approximately 35. Approximately 35. Yep, I get that number for you. Okay, yeah, I, I, we, yeah we should refine this. Uh, your, your basic medical people, how many people are licensed to uh, EMTs from the basic level on up? Approximately 10 basic, one advanced, and five paramedic. Of those five... You have five paramedics? Yes, but of those Listen five paramedics, we only have two that are active. Our active, um, quote unquote, active is based on making ten percent or more of the calls. Calls, okay. Um, what's the problem with those who are not responding? Do you know? Um, they have other jobs. They have other. You mean they're otherwise committed? Okay. They have jobs. They're, they're they have families. They're working as EM. They're working as paramedics someplace else. Is that? 
But are they true members or are they, what do you call them? They're affiliates. They're affiliates. Affiliates, okay. So that's why the stats sound good, but it's not realistic. Yeah, yeah. But the only difference between the affiliates and the full time, well, not full time, but affiliates and the and the other members are that we do not provide the equipment and training for those people. Their other department provides the equipment and training, and they sign a, an agreement with us, Dean, that we can use. They can use their equipment at our department. Okay, so if I understand what you said correctly is you have three affiliates and two paramedics that are actually full-time members of the squad, right? But is that, is that, and one advanced and, and 10 EM, 10 basics? basics? Approximately, yes. Okay. All I'll right. get you the actual yeah, hard part. I'd like that breakdown so we, so we understand uh, because, well, the number of trained drivers? 17. 17, okay, so, you, you, okay, you'll, you'll refine these, right? But, yeah, I will, But I will. basically, I mean, what you told me to date is that you uh, never are short for a driver, is that correct? Correct. Right. Okay, so you have drivers. Almost never, how's okay. that? Almost never, all right, okay. Never okay. Okay. Never okay. say no. All right, okay, yeah, I know. Uh, and, and the number of members of the rescue squad who are also members of the fire department? I... Uh, approximately 29. They, they can come up with a 90%. Yeah, I know they can. I just, I just want to make approximately sure. Approximately 29. I'll get that hardcore number for okay. you later. Okay. Okay. And your approximate number of calls is 200 per year, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, and your your percentages, as I understand it, over the past year have increased percentages of response to calls. And you have told me that you were around 60 to 70 percent, but you're up to 90, but you expect that to drop back this summer, right? In 2013, it was 61 percent. Okay. 2014, 76 percent. And so far this year, we are around 90 percent. 90 percent. Around. I, I believe that, that may have dropped because we did miss a call the other day. Okay. Okay, so, so right now you're responding to 90% of your calls. How are you doing that, though? You're, I, I see that truck sitting over the station an awful lot of time. Is that, is that how this is being done? Or? Yeah, it's by sole two or three people doing all the work. We only have five people, if that, that do the majority of the calls. Mm -hmm. Five licensed people, because Petey goes too, but, yeah. you know, licensed people, it's myself and four other people. And actually, probably three other people now because one person um, needs to renew their license and they don't have the money for the training. Oh, okay. Right, exactly. They, they expired March 31st. Okay, all right. And please go back to my, my very first request for a town of 2,800 people, the numbers that you come up with in, in, in answering this inquiry that was adequate compared to what it should be based on population. That's what I'd like to define for you. Source of training funds is you, you, Just what you billing, told me, the association is billing, huh? billing, donations. Billing, and donations. billing and donations. So it's coming through the association or are people Absolutely. actually having to pay for their own training at this point? Right billing now. donations and individuals. Okay, so so it's basically some donations and individuals who are... Who are right, and for the affiliate members, like I said, they're... they're paid out. Other, their full-time EMS department pays for their training. Well, this person that is not being, is not renewing, is there any money for that in the budget for them? To not be really. Here? No? And how much does it cost? What is the cost of it? It depends. Um, well, for, that for example, PHTL's class, I believe, is around $100. That'll give you 16 hours. ACLS class is, what, 12 hours? And that's around hundred dollars, also. Only a hundred bucks. That's yeah. a good deal. Yeah, it's. That's what it's been forever. And that's no, well, it's not, well, so we're going to lose a person well, because of oh, that amount of money. Yeah, well, what's, what's we don't. They, their license expired March thirty first. So until they get the hours they need, they they're not able to go on calls as a licensed responder. As soon as they get the hours they need, they can they can renew their license with Main EMS, right. and they'll be back on the roster. So that they have to get those hours. The other problem with them is they have they work nights. Most of the training hours during the weekday are at night. It's hard to find these classes for these people who have um, non-traditional hours that yeah. they work yeah. the nights and weekends. 
Okay, is there a compensation method now at all within the squad, or what? Is, um, is there any it's not. No, it's not a compensation. It's just we do give gas cards, but it's not like a stipend like like the fire department does. Um, and the way it works now is, um, they make maybe about three dollars an hour. So based on their based on their gas card, that you do, based on the gas card, you're, you're talking they're getting paid three dollars an hour. Well, three dollars well, an hour. I wouldn't. They get three dollars of gas per hour. Yeah. Okay. All right. I think three dollars worth of gas per hour. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. For like a typical yeah. call, okay. three hours, and they'll get um, nine dollars towards their gas card. I think two years ago when gas prices went sky <laughs> you had less responders too because they just couldn't fill that tank. Right. Yeah. Right. Tough. Exactly. Well, this is this the, the problem that I'm perceiving is one of just plain money, okay? Uh, but I may be wrong about that, but that's why I'm, I'm looking at this because we're talking a lot of money, we're talking some money, or we're, we're trying to find the best path forward to spend that money and support our people who have been party, part and party for this and not just hiring anybody off the street because we think, or I think anyway, that our people need support. Or it's, that's my perception. Okay, okay. Uh, let me go on. So, so th these are gas cards is what your compensation method is. Okay, uh, fire and rescue common services response. I really do think, I've got to say this, Tom, I really think that our time would be used more efficiently if we gave them a chance to actually take this. Look at home. I and, think. you know, I just okay. think that going through it twice is, yeah. is just not, okay. Okay. doesn't make sense. They try to get these out and get them back to you so you can review them prior to the next meeting? Uh, yeah, that would be I helpful, know. but you guys do what you have to do. We're no, just trying to get a lot of more. Work there, so. That's our intent. Get you all we can right off the soon okay. so you have something to absorb. All right. All right. But and meeting is coming up. Before we go, going back to Alfred, it, it, did you ever ask them whether or not the county would at least develop a training center for uh, emergency workers? I'm working on that as we speak. As we the speak. next thing is if they would help us train the medical people. Have a centralized, have a centralized training center for the whole well, county? Yep, we've got a facility. It's a matter of getting the proper instructors. Right. PD, would it be helpful to you if I sent you a copy of this in an electronic file so that you can yeah. just type in? Awesome. Right. 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 I don't have an email address. Yeah. Watch out, he is on our time. Yeah, you asked me to forward it to him, so I did, so it's in a PDF. I've seen it. Okay. But well, well, I can give you one that you can fill directly. That'd be helpful. Oh, that would help because uh, that's uh, Yeah, a, um, a um, open, open source. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. ODF file. Okay. So, well, PD, what is your email address? It's PL. PL. I don't know. At. At microcast.net. At active-fire.org. Active. Active. Active-fire.org. F-I-R-E dot org. Oh, the old, the old, uh, the old website. Yes. I didn't even know that was still on the current website. Oh. <laughs> Resurrected website. <laughs> Good. And what I'll do is I'll give you an I'll give you an ODT file on that. Oh, okay. In Eastern, if you have any questions yeah. with it, yeah. What can you tell me? Yeah. You know, just if there's a problem with any of them, just let us know or yeah. not. But if you yeah, have yeah, a, if somebody else comes up with something that isn't on there, right. you know, yeah. get the information and we'll okay. zip it over to you or whatnot, and then say. By working together and yep. changing ideas, and uh, we not only get the rest of us up to speed of what exactly what the problem is and whatnot, but also in the discussions, maybe there's some things that may come out that give you an idea that hey, maybe we ought to consider. But, uh, so your meetings are Monday night at six thirty, not six, 30. six okay. in spite of what you may have been told. Yep. No, that's what we need to do. Somebody else got a different word, but the next Monday, <laughs> I've already guaranteed, exists. promised my ten-year-old daughter that I will not be around Monday night, the twentieth. So if you want to meet without me, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> that's fine. But that's the twenty-seventh, if you want to meet the twenty-seventh, and are you around next Monday? Um, we're going to Ohio next Monday. Okay. 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 Okay.
Obviously, you're not, you're not around next Monday either, right? Oh, you're talk, taking off school vacation, right? And you'll go out and see your mom? And we may or may not be back. Please, that. All right. Then let's just, just, let's just play it by ear. And for this committee, we can arrange to do something else next week. We yeah. can talk with road commissioners or whatever. Yeah. Or maybe with the selectman about the shed general. Yeah, that doesn't mean I can't fill this out. No, 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 but we don't. We don't. I also don't want to put the load of work on you, and, and uh, you know. So, okay. But if I send it to you in an open file, then you can then you can spread yes. the things apart and, and yep. get in more words, right? So we'll expect a yep. a, a um, an essay associated with each one of these. <laughs> well, I, I think in, in saying that, I think that it, I think it's fantastic that you take the time to do this, Tom. And I mean, it's awesome, but. If you're going to do that for each head department, I think that you should send it to them ahead of time yeah. so that when they come in, they have yeah. the answers. I agree. That I would agree. make things more efficient. Yeah. I have homework to do tonight, yeah. too. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You know? As I'm getting a text in, we have a big plumbing, a uh, big leak in a plumbing on engine three. So when I get down here, I get a plumbing. Which one is engine three? That's a core sheet. It's a small part for you. Oh, okay. Well, what we get from the work we get years ago. That's a. Uh, so are we, this time, yeah. are we meeting yep. next week? Are we, are we meeting next week? Is there unavailable? So. Well, yeah, maybe better than the. Uh, I'd like to talk to the road commissioners yeah. and see what their thoughts are on the salt shed. Right, and uh, also, questions. we have issues. We have issues with um, like the right roads that are being plowed and that I'd like to have straightened out. And, and the roads that probably aren't supposed to be plowed are being plowed, things of that sort. Of thing. But I, I do think that I heard through the grapevine that one of them was going on vacation this okay. week. But so you need to find that out. I, I don't hold me to it. So they wouldn't be available. I I'm saying that oh. I've heard through the grapevine from Scott that um, Dave was going on vacation. So I don't know. I, I could be wrong. So. I'm just You're saying that if we're going to. Um, just southwest of Columbus. Yes. Yes. Sure uh, actually, they, they annexed it would, into Columbus now, so I have to say well, Columbus. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's just plan on a meeting next uh, uh, Monday. It's best to plan on it, and then if we have to, or if there's no reason to have it, we can just cancel it. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah. What was it about the? What was the other thing? You gave another thing that we could talk about. Uh, the shed. The salt shed. shed. Yeah, I'd like yeah. that. I'd like to have but that. That would be the RCs again too, right? But we've got no information whatsoever. Yeah. Right. Who nobody, are we going to get information on? Nobody has an idea. Well, I mean, I, they're, you know, sort of going yeah. into this thing. I'm just wondering who we can, who we can like talk to next week. That's what I'm trying to. Well, think. if the road commissioners are available, we can we can uh, yeah, but if talk to them. We don't know. Okay, then, then let's give that some thought. There was one other issue that I had rolling around in my mind. I can't remember yeah, what it was. Yeah, what was it? <laughs> I just know what 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 I just just do we need to see any others, or is it just... Yeah, I think we do need to see others. We what have, about... We have a section here. Oh, I know our sections. Yes. What I'm saying is, who do you guys want to see? Do you want to see um, the transfer station? Should we see if they're available next I week? I think there are questions with respect to the transfer station that we have. Yeah, yeah, you you know, know more about that than I do. If we can't, yeah, if we... If it's we, not, yeah. We <coughs> have yeah. both yeah. road commissioners in here. I just have to be on that too, so I, I can do that. We'll check that out. Okay. okay. We'll leave that in your hands. In your in your hands. Okay. So Jed, can I get everybody's email address and we can send this to the sure. electronically? Sure. Yeah. Either that or PD can send it to me and I will ship it out. Okay. That's the way yeah. Because yeah. I have it all set up. Yeah. Or I will send you a list of I will send you the email address. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. Ok
go through that. Um, anyway, if, if folks are interested in getting a little background uh, info on the three proposals, the one by the Planning Board and the two proposals by the Board of Selectmen, um, uh, you could join us on Thursday evening. Where is that going to be? Where? Down here uh, at 7 p.m. This um, Thursday, Tom? This yes, one? The 16th. Correct. No, yeah, 16th. The, yeah. the official public hearing is on the 30th. And if you, if anyone would like a copy, I think I might have handed them out on Saturday when we met several weeks ago, but I have some copies here if you want them. I'll take them, Tom. I'm not sure if I did that copy. And I have a more coherent um, yeah, version of that, which I'll hand out Thursday night. Thank you, Mr. Cashman. Yeah. Do you have an extra one? Uh, I don't know if I can do it or not. I, I, for one, would like to thank you guys for coming in tonight. Uh, we probably exhausted you. You exhausted us. Well, we don't have a lot of work to do. Uh, uh, the whole dynamic, new dynamics for us. Well, it's a lot of work, and we just want to do it think, the first time around. I think the best product comes from as many minds as possible Absolutely. focused on the issue. And uh, there are a lot of issues. There's a lot of money involved in this. And frankly, my impression is that we're, we, we, Jumped at solutions, got one that works, but that doesn't mean it's the best one. And I think that this this committee's job is to advise the town meeting, and that's what we're trying to do. Okay, and we need your help doing it. So again, I, I, I'd like to thank you all, and I'm, I'm sure the Dick shares my sentiments, and the committee yeah. shares your sentiments. Uh, I think we do have a lot of work to do here. No, I mean, if anybody has additional questions, they like information, don't hesitate to get a hold of us. I mean. To me, this whole operation looks like a, a half million dollar a year operation, which is basically a, close to a 10% expansion in the, in the annual budget for the town. Um, and I think we're going to do that. That's fine, but we want to do it real carefully, and we want to do it real wisely, and we want everybody to know what their job is when it happens. Okay? And we don't want a lot of loose ends. <coughs> we, don't want to, we want to know who has the power to carry the credit card. Okay? Yeah, yeah. We, don't, okay. we don't want to wind up like Lebanon is, okay? because basically, you know, that's what happened and that's why I keep warning you, more and more got pushed on fewer and fewer, and then people were trying to do things that they had really weren't qualified to do and they got in trouble. Very too many hats, too. It's right, very really too many hats, right. And, and trying to do, because they wanted to do, as you both say, we want to do the job, okay? But you need to have a context in which to perform that job so you know what your job is and what it's not, okay? And who has authority to do what? I'm real interested in who hires and who fires here because that ultimately is who manages, all right? And I think it's very, very important that those things be set out somewhere so that everybody has a common understanding. Otherwise, you know what happens. Mr. Chairman, I move for adjournment. Been moved to adjourn. I'll second that motion. I'm sorry, Bob. Go ahead. All in favor? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.